So, uh, on uh, the uh, usual nonsense from Chris Packham, we were just talking about that a few moments ago, Springwatch basically accusing Anton Deck of sort of a cruelty-based programming, I'm a celebrity, not against, not against Nigel Farage and the other contestants, but against the bugs and the other animals that are used. And we've just been talking actually to uh, a vegan, um, our, our last guest, a very nice chap, I would say, Orin uh, Cooley-Green, um, and they're part of that campaign at University of Trans basically wag their fingers and tell other students what they're allowed to eat. Um, but it was, I was going to ask him like what the worst gift he could get. And I'm thinking it'd probably be a, someone giving him a Some slab of steak. steaks or something, <laughs> which most of us would think was a great gift. Yeah. Um, but it is, it is absolutely fascinating how many people are just so busy wagging their fingers, telling other people, like, no, and it's all this whole world, this whole lefty world of, you can't eat that, you can't smoke that, you can't drive that car, yeah. you can't go on that plane, you can't go to that, and you can't wear that, you can't, I mean, don't they, he's a nice guy, right? But, but don't they ever get bored with telling everybody else what they can do? Well, no, it gives them a reason to get up in the morning, everybody needs that. Um, but I thought it was most interesting thing about all of this, and it's why I'm slightly curious that you think it's necessarily a bad thing, because you read out the stats on how many people actually voted in that. It was about 700 in favour and about 500 against. Out of, out of about 28,000 students. But that, for me, is the key thing there. The majority, that overwhelming majority do not care. They do not vote. They do not engage. That is how unpopular little fringe groups, insurgent groups like that. But they have power way. because they're the only ones who vote. Because they're the ones that vote, and that's the point. If you don't want these things, you have to vote. And we see this broadly no. across the country. But this actually. is the we thing, do. we'd spend our entire lives like these people, and again, I'm mm. not saying this about Alaska, who was very lovely, but let's face it, an awful lot of these activist people in every single area of life, mm. yeah, they they're not much fun, a lot of them, OK? Um, they don't have many friends, a lot of them. This is their raison d'etre. And, and, yeah, they have each other. <laughs> um, and, and let's and let's mention, most of us at university are doing sensible things like not going to lectures, <laughs> three in three years, what played me, um, um, drinking and having sex, which is what you should be doing when you're a student and not necessarily just the activism. I'm just throwing that out there. That's my personal opinion. I think, As a mother. <laughs> I think that time in life is when you're supposed to become an adult, not prolong your adolescence, ultimately. And, yeah, you know, I'm speaking of somebody who did your prolong... Your adulthood. Adult. Yeah, that's ultimately okay. what this is about. I think that this is a, the time, yes, you do do all of those things, but it's not just doing those things. You can do other things as well. Lots of people get jobs for, for the first time at the same time. A lot of people do work very hard, they play sport. But also, it is about growing up. It's about having responsibilities, about dealing with your own bills, dealing with your own landlord, that sort of thing. And ultimately, it is a life lesson. In life, in politics, certainly in this country, very small groups of people yep. manage to affect an awful lot but, of very but we, unpopular But we see, this, we see this in every single area of our lives now, mm. is that we've got extremists. And it is extreme. Telling it people is. they can and can't eat, when well, it's perfectly legal, uh, sure. and, and human beings, by the way, have got you know, mm. different kinds of teeth for a reason. Yeah. Um, it, it, is, is, it is an extremist view, and it's treated mm. as nicey-nicey, but it's like the same as the, sort of the people promoting trans ideology in schools. Yes. It is an extremist view. The idea that we're all fluid and we all can change gender, that's an extremist. And, and five years ago, would have been thought of as a pretty mad view. Yeah. Um, but you get a bunch of ideologists, ide ide ideologues, sorry, you get a bunch of extremists and they push it in the schools, they push it at universities, and, they, and everyone goes, oh, don't worry, when they come out into the world of work, that'll, get, they'll get, that'll be knocked out of them. No, True. they then impose, us, impose that on us in the world of work, in, in politics and in, and in every other area. And, and yeah, I agree with you, you know, people need to stand up to this stuff earlier on. Mm. But, but also, you know, are we giving these people the time of day? But like, you know, like the Chris Packham saying the appalling abuse of animals, and I'm a celebrity, a cop Roach got squashed. I don't care. Of course you don't care. I just care. don't care. But the point is, they are able to do these things and get away with their agendas because people broadly are too passive. They don't take enough of an active interest in what's going on so until you let, it's too late. you let the active people do it, yeah. Yeah, you okay. need to be Well, OK, well, game. let's bring that on. Let's bring that on to the migrant story, which mm. we've been talking about a lot. I'm going to talk more about with uh, Ben Habib a little bit later in the show as well. Um, it is, you know, we've had, there are loads of stories in the papers. You know, some mm. on the front page, some inside, basically all along the lines of, Tory MPs and Tory voters, and indeed it would appear people, you know, Tory, Tory ministers in government, some of them, would like the Tory government. Yeah. I know, by the way, we've had a Tory government since 2010. You never bloody know it, would you? But apparently they would actually like them to do something about some of the things they said they were going to do stuff about. Mm. So cutting immigration numbers, not just illegal migrants on boats, because apparently, look over there, folks, these tens and tens of thousands of young men arriving on dinghies, worry about that. Don't worry, your pretty little heads, about 745,000 more people coming to live and work in this country last year yeah. uh, than, than uh, you know, than left the country. Huge numbers of people. 
Many of those, some of those, I don't know. We don't know. Will be net contributors who will be people who are working hard. They're doing jobs that we couldn't get people to do from this country. They will be providing vital skills. They'll be entrepreneurs. They'll be creative people, IT people, health workers and the like. But many of them are doing, you know, they're working as cab drivers. They're working in factories. They're doing care home work. Very, very vital work. Very yeah. important work to do well. But nevertheless, not work that you, for which you need years and years of training. Um, and, and we know, you know, that we've got a whole load of visas where you can basically, as, a, as an employer, say, I can't get people locally, not that I've really bothered, and I'm not offering enough money to people locally to come and do these jobs because get more sh still shacking, stacking shelves in Sainsbury's, but I'd like to hire people from abroad to come and do those jobs. I need to get visa for these people, and I'm going to pay them 20% less than I pay my British workers. Mm. On what planet is that acceptable? In a passive society. Again, how many people are on out-of-work benefits in this country? Yeah. Uh, ultimately, this is a society that it doesn't want to be bothered. It doesn't want anybody to bother them. And so they will avoid having the difficult conversations or doing the difficult things. Not everybody, but a lot of people, a yeah. critical enough number, will avoid it. The, they don't want to be called racist, so they don't want to have the conversations. And all that you end up down the line is then having far harder conversations when actually the backlash happens and people do get a lot more... No, but, but, also, but also the likes of Tommy Robinson have that conversation conversation and people listen to him. Absolutely. Absolute. Well, that's what I mean. Eventually, if you don't have the Kurt harder Fielders conversation... Kurt in Netherlands. If you don't have yeah. the straight-talking conversation at the start, it will get a lot more extreme down the line. But that is what I've happens when you're I've been called a racist, racist xenophobic bigot since, I mean, I would say probably, you know, 20... Yeah. Before twenty, no, before twenty, in the twenty. But you are actually an exception because I was talking about immigration yeah. and unsustainable. You were numbers. an exception. You were prepared to have the conversation. The average person does not want the hassle of being called. They don't want to lose their job. Well, they don't. People, they want people to like them. If enough people turned round when they were accused of being a racist and went, you know, that, that well, great. You no, know, what I do is I say I no. <laughs> if I see the messages, mm. I would say it's very very simple. Do you own your own house? Mm. Good, because then you can pay you can pay my 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 fees for my lawyers when I win my libel I mean, case against Well, this you. again though, not many people are prepared to do that. They want to avoid the conflict in the first place. And this is always the problem. When you avoid the issue, and we go back to when it comes to government spending on infrastructure, or whatever, when you avoid the issue that's staring you in the yeah. face, you kick it down the road, it will get harder down the line. And you will have to have tougher, but, more but also, expensive here's the question. responses. Why don't government ministers want to limit the number of people coming to live in this country, given that we are by most counts, I mean, compared to most countries, an overcrowded country. Yes, we've only built on 4% or 6%, whatever it is, of our land. But, and there are plenty of green spaces. But if if you genuinely, under Blair, Brown, Cameron, Theresa May, Boris, if, and they all are signed up to this, OK? Yeah. And I think Rishi Sunak is as well. If you, if you genuinely think it's a good idea, fine. Tell us why you think it's a good idea. Because you're happy to tell those business leaders at that summit the other day, oh, great idea, bringing more people, brilliant. And highly paid people, highly skilled people, yeah, great. Um, although I do find it weird that apparently we can't train up enough. Apparently we're uniquely stupid and people in every other country are better able to be trained to be doctors and engineers and entrepreneurs or whatever. But, but if you are going to do that, then at least say, right, so we're going to do this, but that means we're going to build more nuclear power stations, more reservoirs for the water, uh, because we're going to have another 10 million people. We're going to build more schools, we're going to train more teachers, we're going to build more hospitals, we're going to train more doctors and nurses and radiographers and the like. Mm. Uh, we are going to build more houses, we're going to build more roads, we're going to build more of a railway network. You would say, we're going to do this, but it's a good idea, and now we're going to build the infrastructure to make that work for people yeah. so it doesn't impose a cost on the individual people already living in this country but they didn't do that they tried to sneak it in without telling us mm. they tried to they literally brought in millions of people having uh, a they didn't ask us when we found out and we said we don't want this they carried on doing it yes so why why what's the motivation you have a twin issue in the tory party which is i know it sounds like lots of people say it, they aren't very conservative thatcherism is not actually conservative the the the, the free market free marketeerism is in many cases a wonderful thing but it does come with costs yeah. this is one of them is the idea that undercutting wages suppressing wages is a good thing doing things on the cheap is necessarily a good thing. That is partly where a lot of this comes from. People saying, oh, well, we need these workers to work for less money because mm. that benefits somebody else. It creates more wealth, supposedly. Obviously, benefits it benefits big, big, big business. To yeah, keep but wages. it doesn't, of course, if lots of people are also exploiting it and bringing in lots of dependents. And on the other side, you have people who are not conservatives. They're liberals and they just want to be nice. They want to be seen to be being nice. And this is what they think is a nice thing to do because they've been brought up on the sort of the post Second World War idea of never again and every human is this, that, and the other. Everybody, open, yeah, you must always open accept borders. the refugees. And everybody who comes and says they are a refugee is necessarily a refugee and you must believe them. That is where that comes from. There isn't a sort of a hard-headedness that says, actually, you have to be firm 
to be kind to people. It is, does not benefit a country in sub-Saharan Africa to say, we're going to take all the brightest and best people so yeah. that it stays yeah. the third world, no, but also, or to the people who are already but, here, but so but you'll also, never get a job. Unless they are genuine refugees, and again, I, just, I, don't, I don't think a lot of the people getting on dinghies uh, in the beaches of Calais are. Um, I, I, it, it, is, it is a simple matter that when people come to... It should be a net benefit to the people of this country, not just to people who run big businesses and don't want to mm. pay a living wage. And by the way, we've been saying, oh, they're working. Well, that's fine, these people working, but they're still needing housing benefits to pay their rent. They're still needing working tax credit. They're getting, you know, childcare vouchers. Get, I mean, it's just an absolute nonsense. But even when it comes to refugees, the majority of refugees, real refugees, actually, they don't want to leave their country. No. They're being forced to... What you saw with the Ukraine war is the majority of people, and they ended up in Slovakia, the Czech Republic, and Poland, Poland. because it was close to their families. And, and also, people have already culture. started going back. Because exactly, they, back they did families. start going back. So you okay. can't just say, we're going to let in all the refugees, because most of the refugees actually don't want to cross halfway yeah. across the world. Exactly. That's not their motivation. Exactly.